Welcome to SharePoint Mastery Showcase, Episode 10, SharePoint 2007 Beginner Project 1, Part 4, with your host, Keith Hudson. At SharePoint Mastery, we help you master SharePoint one step at a time so you can control your own destiny. This is part four of SharePoint 2007 Beginner Project 1. How to design and build a simple help desk ticketing system in under four hours, even if you've never used SharePoint before. So far in this series, we have taught you a method for analyzing a business process. In this part, we'll show you the basics of how to navigate in a SharePoint site and how to create a new SharePoint 2007 site. You will need design permissions in a SharePoint site to follow along with this lesson. If you don't already have a practice site set up, you can obtain one through www.spmastery.com forward slash practice for $10 a month. Before I show you how to create a new SharePoint site, however, I'd like to explain the difference between a site and a site collection in SharePoint. A SharePoint site collection is a special group of sites that are related to each other and that are protected from anyone damaging those sites from outside that site collection. They are essentially in a security bubble. The top site for a site collection has to be created by the SharePoint Farm Administrator through SharePoint Central Administration. By default, all the sites created within a single site collection share the same permissions. Nothing you do within a SharePoint site collection can do any damage to sites outside of that site collection. For this reason, as long as you work within your own site collection, no mistakes you make are going to hurt anyone else's SharePoint site if you are given your own site collection. If, however, your company uses a single SharePoint site collection for all of its departments, then someone who makes a mistake in one SharePoint site can do a great deal of damage to other sites within that SharePoint environment. It is my recommendation that when you are building SharePoint sites to automate business processes, you should use single-purpose site collections where all the sites within that collection share the same user groups and permissions. As soon as you need a different set of user groups for a site, that's a signal to start a new site collection. Now let's see how to create a new SharePoint site and how to navigate in it. We're looking at a SharePoint 2007 site. In the very top left-hand corner of the page is a breadcrumb that, the sh that shows the site we're at and the site above it. Below that is the title of the site. Below that is a tab, or sometimes you'll see a whole series of tabs. That's called the top line menu. The top line menu usually lists various sites within the site collection you're working in, although it can be used to navigate to other sites as well. Down the left hand side of the page is the quick launch bar. In the upper right hand corner is the welcome widget showing who is logged into the site and just below that is the search box to search through the site. Just under the search box is the site actions menu button. If you can't see the site actions menu button you don't have design permissions in the site you're looking at. To create a new site click on the site actions menu select create then select Sites and Workspaces from the Web Pages section of that page. You're taken to the new SharePoint site page. Sometimes it might take a minute for your server to do that. You give it a title. I'm going to call it Help Desk. You'll notice I don't use a space. I'll go back and add it later because otherwise I end up with a bunch of weird characters in the URLs for my site. I do the same thing with lists and columns and it saves a whole lot of hassle later on. I'm leaving the language as English and I like to select document workspace because it's the only template that Microsoft has given us in SharePoint 2007 that lets you build a web part that spans the entire width of the home page of the site that you're now creating. Don't ask me why they haven't given that option in other templates, but they haven't. I'll leave the permissions the same as my parent site. 
I'll leave the display on the quick launch and top link bar the same and I'll say no to using the top link bar from the parent site and hit create. Now the server creates the website and there it is. You'll notice that our current website now shows in the breadcrumb. Let's first of all before we do anything else go into site actions, site settings and put a space back into the name of the page. Under look and feel we select title, description and icon, find the title, put the space in and say OK. Let me show you one more thing I like to do when I create a new site. I like to go to the top site of my site collection, grab the URL, and then go into my top link bar, create a new link, put in the URL for the top site, and I'll either call it top site or portal. And then I like to also change the order so that the top site shows up on the left hand side of my bar. That just gives me a quick and easy way when I'm at the home page or anywhere else in my site of getting back to the very top site. You can also use the breadcrumb up here. You'll see in SharePoint 2010 that that breadcrumb gets changed so it's actually a nice habit to get into of having a quick way to get back to your top site. Now we're ready to move to part 5 and begin building our SharePoint lists. Thank you for joining us for this episode of SharePoint Mastery Showcase, presented by SharePoint Mastery, where we help you master SharePoint one step at a time so you can control your own destiny. Come visit us at www.spmastery.com. 